I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the San Francisco League of Women Voters. I'm here to discuss Proposition F, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, June 5th. The city and county of San Francisco funds nonprofit organizations that provide free legal representation to some San Francisco residential tenants who face eviction. To evict a residential tenant, the landlord must give the tenant a written notice of eviction. If a tenant does not move, the landlord may file a lawsuit asking a court to order eviction. Proposition F would adopt a policy that San Francisco shall provide legal representation to all residential tenants facing eviction. Proposition F would require the city to establish, fund, and run a program to provide legal representation for all tenants in San Francisco facing eviction, provide a lawyer for a tenant within 30 days following an eviction notice, or immediately upon receipt of a lawsuit seeking eviction, whichever is sooner. The lawyer would provide legal representation to the tenant through all stages of the eviction process until resolved, and implement this program within 12 months after this measure is adopted. Proposition F would not require the city to provide legal representation to tenants who reside in the same dwelling unit with their landlord. A yes vote means, if you vote yes, you want to require the city to establish, fund, and run a program to provide legal representation for all residential tenants in San Francisco facing eviction. A no vote means, if you vote no, you do not want to create this program. I'm here with Jen Snyder with Yes on F and a proponent of Proposition F. Welcome. Thank you. We're also joined by Charlie Goss from the San Francisco Apartment Association and an opponent of the measure. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. I'm going to be starting with opening statements. And let's start with you, Charlie. Why do you believe this proposition is so important? So the Apartment Association is recommending a no vote on Prop F. And there are a number of reasons why but mainly that the, the proposal as currently written is overly broad. So when you think about providing city-funded eviction defense for tenants, it sounds like a good idea. And you look at uh, potentially tenants who are evicted through no fault of their own, what we call no-fault evictions. But that's not what this measure does. This measure provides eviction defense uh, paid by you and I as taxpayers uh, for high income tenants and tenants who are creating a nuisance for other people in the building who are not paying their rent for months or years at a time and who are potentially allowing fire safety hazards to uh, persist in their apartment buildings. On top of that, uh, the measure is an unfunded mandate. What that means is that this expansion of government will uh, draw away necessary resources from our general fund. Uh, those, the general fund we use to build affordable housing, homeless services, clean our streets, those, those sorts of things. And the measure is just too broad. Jen, why do you believe this measure is so important? Well, it's a non-controversial statement to say that San Francisco is facing a massive displacement crisis. Uh, rents are skyrocketing. And over 40,000 people have faced eviction in the past five years. Um, and when folks are evicted in San Francisco, they often have to leave the city in its entirety or they end up homeless and on our streets. Uh, in fact, a recent study showed that 71% of our homeless folks on our streets um, were actually housed here in San Francisco within the past few years. And one of the reasons that that is um, true is because there's a massive power imbalance between tenants and landlords in the city. Uh, nationally, the statistic is that 90% of landlords go into an eviction with an attorney and 90% of tenants go into an eviction without them. And that means that they lose their homes even when they shouldn't, even when it's a fraudulent eviction, they often do not fight it because uh, it's so cost prohibitive and difficult. Um, Thank and that's, you. Oh, sure, Sorry. certainly. I'm going to ask some questions and I'm going to start with you, Jen. Sure. Um, would Proposition F mandate legal representation in the event of rightful evictions, such as non-payment of rent? So it does cover all tenants uh, in San Francisco, but that doesn't mean that they would win the case at all. Just like how you get a public defender if you in, in a criminal case, you would get um, an eviction attorney if you are taken to housing court. Um, but that does not mean that a uh, attorney would litigate a case that has nowhere to go at all. So, and there, the, there's been studies in New York 
which already passed this in 2016, that proves that um, it's not, uh, it doesn't take up a bunch of the court's time. So it's actually, it goes pretty smoothly and quickly. In fact, in New York, um, they found that for every dollar they spend on eviction defense, they're saving $3 in homelessness services. So it's actually just as cost effective for their city as it is just humane. Thank you. Uh, same question to you, Charlie. From your point of view, um, how do you feel about the mandate um, providing legal representation in the event of rightful eviction, such as non-payment of rent? So the city and county of San Francisco has very highly regulated controls on eviction. And the fact of the matter is that there were around 1,700 evictions that took place in San Francisco for around 200,000 rental housing units. So that's less than 1% of tenants. What that means, because there are only 15 reasons to evict a, a, a tenant, is that they're legitimate reasons. Sure, it might make sense to provide an attorney for an Ellis Act eviction, where a tenant is evicted for no fault of their own. But what we see overwhelmingly, and the statistics bear this out at the rent board, is that tenants are evicted for things like breach of rental agreement, non-payment of rent, and committing nuisance for other people in the building. It doesn't make sense that we as taxpayers would pay to defend an eviction for a, a nuisance where a tenant is creating a decreased quality of life for his neighbors. Uh, the next question is going to start with you. And it's, will income restrictions be put in place to prevent those who could afford representation from using city-provided attorneys at taxpayer expense? That's part of the problem with this measure is it's going to be going before the voters. And what that means is it's inflexible. In San Francisco, when something is approved by the voters, it can't be changed except at the will of other voters. There's currently a legislative proposal that would do almost exactly what this proposal does, which is provide eviction defense for residents. If it was worked out in the legislative arena where we believe it should be, you could income test residents and only provide eviction defense for people who uh, couldn't afford an attorney. Or you could say that perhaps the city should not pay to defend people who are creating a nuisance for other, other people in the building. The legislative process, and again, the Board of Supervisors has this before them currently, has the ability to legislate the same thing and put reasonable controls where we are all not paying for the attorney for a very wealthy resident. Jen, your response to that? Well, the truth is, is that actually 80% of tenants that face eviction are at about 80% of AMI. And so there are already low uh, income folks. Um, it covers everyone because the process necessary to income test everyone is actually not worth uh, doing to exclude the very few amount of folks that uh, it could potentially include. And also, let's face it, I mean, most folks who are very wealthy own their own home. Uh, and most folks who are wealthy and are renters usually have their own counsel for things like this and don't rely on public attorneys. Uh, closing statements, we'll start with you, Charlie. Uh, the Apartment Association would like to ask voters to vote no on Proposition F because, again, we believe that the measure is overly broad and it's something that the Board of Supervisors can do uh, legislatively. That will allow for flexibility, that will allow for, for Jen and myself and other community groups to come to a table and negotiate. And we can perhaps agree that maybe the executive of a tech company down the street doesn't deserve to have his attorney paid for by you and I as taxpayers. We can also agree if somebody's creating a life safety risk at the building, perhaps that person doesn't, uh, uh, should not be provided an attorney uh, by us as taxpayers. Uh, passing this legislatively allows for much more flexibility and a more collaborative solution. Jen. So the time for this is now. Um, this has already been done in New York City and it's been so effective and wonderful. Um, we had a pilot program for this in 2011 and it's time to make San Francisco uh, the first city in California and the second in the nation uh, to have a, a legal right to counsel for tenants facing eviction. And that's why a huge broad coalition of everyone from teachers and nurses to small landlords, uh, tenant groups, neighborhood associations, democratic clubs, you name it, um, have coalesced behind Yes on F and are urging folks to vote for it and provide uh, our defense against eviction for San Franciscans. Thank you both for your time. Thank you. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For information about this and other ballot measures in the June election, please visit the Department of Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall starting on May 7th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote Tuesday, June 5th.